Mama, I have a question. Why don't people like the irrational numbers? Hmm, do you feel the same about them, 37? Hmm, maybe a little? You see, Mama... I can count to three, and to seventeen, but I can never count to something like 0 0.01001000100001, let alone use it in calculations. The endless non-repeating decimals would make a mess of the results, and I can't keep the equations as simple and elegant as I want. Your favorite, the circle. The ratio of its circumference to diameter is also an irrational number, is it not? Pi is special. I know how it was found and what it represents, so I trust it and use it in my calculations. The same with E, logarithm 2, and root 2. But not many irrational numbers of this convenient to work with. Some have no patterns, no simplest forms, and no end. I can't work out their digits, write them out, or calculate them. Not only are they impossible to pinpoint on the number axis, but there's an infinite amount of these irrational numbers. <laughs> What's so funny, Mama? You're a clever, silly goose, my dear. You don't dislike them. You just don't understand them enough. friend root 2 for instance the irrationality of this number can be proven through basic arithmetic as it cannot be expressed as an irreducible fraction of integers a over b a simple proof by contradiction is enough with no knowledge of irrational numbers required the presence of root 2 is prevalent in nature and it is particularly noticeable along the diagonals of a square. This means... Oh, I know! This means the system built solely on the ratio of integers was flawed. Yes, root 2 is simple, elegant, and one of the greatest discoveries in mathematics. It showed the existence of infinite, incommensurable numbers, with root 2 being the most obvious one to find. This was how the tower of old ideas crumbled, paving the way for revolutionary breakthroughs that catapulted mathematical analysis into uncharted frontiers. We discovered a kingdom beyond our traditional methods, one that's immeasurable, incommensurable and inexhaustible. And the key to its gates is hidden in plain sight, in the diagonal of a square. A kingdom of irrationality? I see now, Mama. We are not all-knowing beings. There will always be numbers beyond our awareness, such as the nature of irrational numbers. So, if we get to know the irrational numbers better, we can be friends with them too. But, you haven't told me why people on the island hate them. 
Mama? <gasps> Thirty-seven. You're awake. Sophia? How long was I out? You've been in a coma for a week. We... No, stop! You're not well yet! There's no time! I have to find six! I have to tell them now! Our circle has been broken. Now we've learned some manners in a payron, haven't we? Namely, to abstain from beans, never parcel off a loaf, and stay away from the white roosters on the road. <laughs> it's been so long since we last talked about these things. How time does fly. This rusty brain of mine is struggling to keep up. Hmm. We should have waited until dawn to light the candles. The sun would have mistaken the day for night and delayed its appearance in the morning. That way, we would have had more time to talk. Indeed. You possess a far greater understanding of the laws of nature than your ancestors. It's only natural that you wouldn't relate candlelight to sunrise. But for the people of earlier times, there was a commonly understood connection between the two. Did the trees not bear fruit after the Horn of Plenty was filled at the Harvest Festival? Did the field not wave with grain? Does the lighting of a match not illuminate the moon? It's human nature to try to understand the world. Of course, at that time, mistakes were made, and some phenomena were attributed to the wrong causes. Some theories were developed from false facts. It was a time of symbols, you see. The flower represented blessings and harvest. The Ouroboros, the eternal cycle. The hawk, wit and astuteness. And the soil, safety and protection. Aside from nature, the circle symbolized protection, the triangle, stability, and the triple helix, ascendance, change, and the unity of mind, body and soul. As time went on, things became associated with one another, and more and more symbols were created. Ah, <sighs> you can see the cause and effect with your own eyes, dear. It's clear when something is related, and when it isn't. If the outcome isn't what we expect, these symbols must be incorrect. But it's not their physical form that's wrong. Physical objects never lie. It's the meaning and concept given to them that are wrong, you see. Objects are just objects. A match is just a match, not the illuminator of the moon. An animal is just an animal. The circle and triangle are only shapes. And you are just you.
nothing's happening. Miss Virgin, your attention, please. This is a public inquiry, and your answer determines the fate of you and your friends. There will be a vote on your punishment, considering the leak of the island's coordinates and the damages caused by you and Manus Vindicte. Yet, in the past two hours, you've looked at your watch ten times. Forgive me for being blunt. What could possibly bother you more than your sentence? My apologies. Let her look, 888. Doesn't it occur to you that time is also in the form of numbers? Perhaps she's waiting for her lucky number to come. <laughs> <laughs> And besides, what conclusions have the good people here made? We were brought together in this great hall today, for misfortunes have struck us in the past week. Manus followers were found dead in our sacred place, the Gorgon current was cut off, and a human army has invaded our land. There were also the territorial disputes, the threats from external powers, and the conflicts between our guests. As you can see, our guests have brought us quite the unexpected gifts. They will give us their explanations. But whose words should we trust? Those of the Foundation or Manus Vindicte? I swear on the Stone of Truth that I have no knowledge of the leak. We never gave any information to the humans. As we speak, the St. Pavlov Foundation is taking measures to mediate the territorial disputes from outside the island. But you did report everything here to the Foundation. And you don't know what they did with the information, do you? Right. A questionable defense. A doubtful explanation. Why should we trust her? We all know that the Foundation is closely associated with the humans. They are the false friends of the Arcanists, with their crocodile tears and broken vows. While many may have changed over time, their nefarious human taint lingers. Besides, why should we seek collaboration and assistance from an organization that's seven years behind us on the study of the Emanation? But rush not, brothers and sisters. The moment of decision has not yet arrived. Let's give our old friend Manus Vindicte a fair and equal hearing before casting our pebbles into the pot. Indeed, the Foundation's understanding of the emanation is seven years behind ours. However, our Manus friends here are unable to speak at all, let alone understand complex mathematical principles. Please enlighten us, Miss Arcana. Why were swaths of your followers found dead at the door of our sacred place? Did our math lessons drive them to madness? causing them to bash their heads against the gates of truth like martyrs. So it would seem. What? One must confess that our followers were ill-prepared to take on the wisdom of the island. 
But we didst come seek mutual development with sincerity. I trust you are aware of the assistance we have provided over the years in this world of matters which you, though reluctantly, relied upon. As to this debate, I was once told a story that now seems fitting to recount. Pray, share with us. Thank you kindly. Tis the story of the circle. A young artist told it to me before I arrived on this island. In the ancient past, amid a world of primitive instincts and ignorance, the first intelligent mind awakened. Overwhelmed by the enormity of nature and dismayed by its own insignificance, the creature was shaken to its core. In an act of defiance, it drew a magic circle, shielding its powerless self from the formidable world beyond. This was the first magic, when the primitive man mastered the Numa within and wielded it against the relentless forces of nature. In that process, man hath gained a deeper understanding of the boundaries and limitations of its power. This is the tale of the first circle. The circle shielded us and its protection benefits thee to this day. What I find intriguing in this story, man hath established its existence, recognized its boundaries, and learned the purpose of life all by relying upon this very circle. What's wrong, 37? The island. Our island has fallen ill. Ah! What is going on? Is that a hailstorm? No. I don't think so. Those are... Abraxases. Falling from the sky. It's the storm. The storm of this era is here.
Miss Verton, did you just say the emanation has happened? Just now? More precisely, its 24-hour countdown has begun. There's always a buffer period before the storm, during which the storm syndrome gradually spreads from the critical point across the globe. The symptoms are different every time, and we have yet to discern a pattern. With the help of Laplace Scientific Computing Center, the best we can do now is to send a 24-hour warning prior to the storm. Another minute has passed. Please remain seated, everyone. We are still in the middle of a vote. The emanation holds no influence on this island. The discussion must continue until a satisfactory conclusion is reached. No other subjects shall be brought up until then. Come here, 37. Can someone please bring her a blanket? Forty-two. Go with Sophia and check on those Abraxases. Ah, good news. Good news indeed. We are freed from the pain of choosing whom to blame, are we not? What? The emanation is coming. The tides of Numa will pour from above and wash away all trivialities. By then, human intruders and the international powers of this era, along with the turmoil they brought, will all be dissolved and poured into the ditches like gunk. And we will regain our shores and return to the study of essence and forms. It's different this time. The island has fallen ill. It's getting bloated, stagnant, and sluggish, drifting into the world of matters where ignorance reigns. Soon, the tides of Numa will wash over us. Sweeping away the fragments of the phenomenal world. What did you say? In other words, we will all be taken by the emanation? This. This is unthinkable. Thirty-seven, you just woke up from a coma. You're not well. Why don't you take another rest? No! No time for that! I'm here to warn you! Apiron is gone. I can no longer sense it! This has never happened before! Why are you so surprised, Thirty-seven? You should know the reason of its alienation. You brought outsiders to the sacred place. You betrayed the scripture's teachings and angered a Puron. <gasps> of course, I may have jumped to this accusation, 
as Manus Vindicte also intruded our sacred place without permission. People, as of now, there's no proof that the emanation will influence the island. 37's account is lacking. And we are still plagued by suspicions, accusations, and the damage is done to our home. We are to proceed with the hearing and reach a final verdict on both the Foundation and Manus Vindicte. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I, I shouldn't have intruded the whole of truth, but... Sophia, weren't you and 42 checking on the Abraxasis? What is the matter? The Abraxasis don't look right. Their beaks, no, their entire heads are melting into oil paints. And 42, we were on the beach suddenly, he... <laughs> now I see! It finally all makes sense! There never was the truth, nor the transcendental! Everything is a lie, nothing but shadows on walls, flickers of fire and fragments of reality. No one will survive the oblivion. The island will be destroyed amid its conflict. <gasps> The Storm Syndrome. 42, your face! No one! 888, stop conversing with him. We must subdue him. Now. Using troops. <laughs> he has the storm syndrome. Please listen, everyone. 37 is right. Something's changed on this island. Your immunity to the emanation has been weakened. That's never happened in the last eight times! A feeble induction, my friend. Just because you've never seen a purple cow doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Must we talk of logic now? 42 has literally been emanated! First the army, then the emanation. Everything's been falling apart since the outsiders arrived on this island. The foundation and Manus Vindicte. One of them must answer for this. Then you should also ask 37 and number zero what they've done in the sacred place to anger Aperon so much. Hi. No, 37 didn't cause this. I told you, it was Manus Vindicte. They broke the peace agreement and launched suicide attacks. They forced their way into the cave. You and them are equally responsible on this matter. They at least paid with their lives. What about you? You claim that 42's abnormality was caused by the emanation. But how are we to believe that it isn't, in fact, the work of your arcane skills? As we went through your belongings, Miss Verton, we found a golden sampling device. Enlighten us. What exactly is the Foundation looking for here? That's... 
<laughs> good, Vertin, good. Let the confrontations be louder and the struggles be harder. I wonder what shall come of this. Silence. The debates will end now. Since we were unable to come to an agreement, further discussion is pointless. There are more pressing matters to attend to. This will be the end of the assembly, and my decision will be the final ruling. I demand that both parties leave this island at once. I respectfully accept your verdict. My choice matches that of Verton's. <gasps> but may I ask for one small doubt to be dispelled? Miss Verton and I will depart ere long. Do you truly not desirest aid from us? You're kind to ask, miss. It is true that our circle has been disturbed, but we see it as a mere turbulence of the phenomenal world. He who holds the compass decides the circle. This will not shift the center of our focus nor change the shape of our beliefs. Medin Hagan. <sighs> he purged the Storm Syndrome with an arcane skill. I never thought it would be possible. The light of intelligence has cleansed 42 of confusion. It is also what the island needs. The incident will be properly handled, and my ruling stays unchanged. I expect your words to be matched by actions, Miss Arcana. Certainly. It was a fair and just decision. If only one could depart amidst such unfavorable weather. I presume Miss Verton will also appreciate more time to prepare for the journey. What sayest thou? The hourglass empties in two hours. Please leave before that. Thank you for your thoughtful consideration. Lastly, I would like to share a story. To conclude today's meeting and respond to Miss Arcana's tale. 
I am most honored. I too have heard the story of the First Circle, but in my version, more followed. The First of Man were intimidated by the enormity of nature and constantly tried to defy and escape it. Our ancestors, however, had the opposite reaction. They found solace in nature, which welcomed them with a nourishing embrace, sharing its vastness and sublimity without reservation. It was the perfect harmony, the moment the circle ceased to represent confrontation and avoidance. As we bathed in Apollo's illumination and wandered the tranquil shores, our souls resonated, and we were lifted to a higher wisdom. This was how we conquered our fears, emerged from ignorance, and allowed ourselves to indulge on the essence and forms. This was the rise of the classic man, May you all be blessed with the courage for reconciliation, the determination for peace, and the devotion to nature, qualities no less noble than caution and defiance. You may all leave now. Please, just a moment. Fix our circle. Eight hundred and eighty eight was right. I have enraged a peron. I am responsible. I will go back to the sacred place, pass its test, and ask it to share the divine light of Gnosis so we can learn the truth about the essence. I will make up for what I've done. I promise. It has been 300 years since the last challenger had their success in the cave. 37, are you aware that we have other means to cleanse the island, even if you don't bring the matter to a payroll? Yes, I'm aware. Then are you aware of the price you will pay should you fail its test? Then you shall have my blessing. The headquarters has issued a notice. The critical point of the storm is in Vienna.
This type of storm syndrome involves a bodily transformation into oil paintings, primarily affecting the face, but sometimes spreading to the torso. It is often accompanied by delirium and an intense obsession with war. Like the storm of 1929, it was accelerated by social upheavals resulting from the constant tensions management dictate created between nations. This... era... This is absurd! We went through all that trouble, sweated our guts out, and finally got to a place where the storm can be kept out. But now you're telling me that immunity is going to disappear like a fart in the wind! <sighs> I was planning to stay here for a while. There might be alchemic materials and pieces of books the Abraxas has left behind from their mills. Oh, now that is frustrating, mate! <sighs> Such is the nature of Arcanum. The immunity hasn't disappeared. It's just waning. For now, only the beach has lost the effect. We are still safe around the Hall of Apiron. But there is no guarantee that we'll be safe here forever, right? <laughs> Reminds me of Zeno's survival test. Senato and I talked about this. We think the island is protected by a large-scale arcane ritual. The sudden decay of the island's storm immunity might be the result of its changes, though I'm unsure of the specifics. Those people are doing something about it, right? That leader with the rock star hair, shouldn't he be taking action by now? Six has gathered all integers after the assembly. They are going to perform a mass cleansing ceremony. 37 also mentioned a test. I think they have more than one way to deal with the changes. To the best of this apple's knowledge, secluded pure-blood arcanist groups often have rituals that they keep to themselves. These islanders impart truths based on intellect and rationality, yet their doctrines are highly religious. Perhaps their arcane skills are passed down in a religious manner. Oh, very mysterious. Very arcane. I hope they're not all huddled together doing a math at a time like this. And I'm more worried about us, Capitan. Arcana asked for more time for both sides to withdraw, didn't she? Yes. Six gave us two hours to leave. That is to say... We must set out when the storm countdown reaches 20 hundred. And before that, the stone bangle on your wrist still works, right? Yes. I can feel it. It would scold me whenever I thought about going to war with them. Huh, I see. So we only have two hours for the plan. Plan? What plan? Aren't we sneaking away from all this? Sorry, Regulus. Your... Mm, accommodation was a long way from ours, so we haven't given you the latest updates. To put it simply... Where are you going? Um... Uh... 37? We... We're discussing how to leave this place, 37. 
precisely. I was just about to say, your chief wants us gone in a jiffy, but we don't even have a piece of wood to sail with. Vertin is sizing us up to see if we can fit in her suitcase. She's going to swim across the Aegean Sea using her tiny arms. Right, Vertin? Right. Hmm. Sounds like a lot of fun. Then you must leave from the north side of the beach. Jump off the cliff there and head south. The cliff is on the tangent line of the Hall of Aperon, which is a good sign for your journey. I will show you where to jump. But you'll have to wait till Verton and I return. Me? Where are we going? What kind of question is that? The only place worth going. You're the one and only Zero. We'll go see a pair on together. Aren't you going to look for 37? You took such good care of her while she was in a coma. I don't know. I don't know what I should do, Madame Mata. She's going back to the cave for the test, where I can't help her. All I can do is pray for her, for I have no adequate knowledge or power to assist her. As ever. Perhaps you needn't worry so much. 37 is the one favoured by truth. She will be fine. I know. It's just... <sighs> She is also of mortal flesh. She could get hurt, bleed, or die. You haven't been with us for long, Madame Marta. The Peyron and its test might be new to you. Here on this island, we spent years theorizing, proving, and constructing models based on our mortal comprehension, defining the boundaries of what man is capable of understanding. But when it comes to the essence and forms, we are unable to make any definitive statements. So we humbly approach the temple and inquire about the correctness of our beliefs. And our answer is delivered as a yes or no reverberating in the form of echoes. Is that the submission of proof Six mentioned before? Validating one's essence and soul with a number and verifying the authenticity of one's claims are simple feats for us. But a Peyron's test is different. Those who succeed will obtain the transcendental truth. Those who fail will pay a terrible price. <sighs> Everything has its limits and boundaries. Those who overstep their bounds will only court their own misfortune. We must respect and be wary of our limits so our souls will be adequate for our bodies, and all things be refrained from excess. The boundless, limitless, and infinity are not of our realm to tread. 
they belong only to ancient beings that we cannot utter. We can only stand in awe, offering our admiration, humility, and reverence. Now 37 is going to knock on its door and ask to be indulged with the transcendental truth. But if she fails, if she can't bear the weight of the boundless infinity, I wish I knew a better way, or could even do it in her place. But only she can do it. It has to be her. 37. I'm sure this is the perfect solution to finally put an end to all our problems. If I pass the test, a Piron will grant me the answer to one question. It can be any question I don't have an answer to. Even about the essence and everything. At least that's what Mama told me. I just have to choose the right question to ask. And we will be rid of all the troubles. Whether it be the emanation, the turmoil of the phenomenal world, or the dangers threatening the island. All will be gone. I have Six's blessing. He agrees with me. So, Furtin... Uh-uh. Not so fast. You can't just steal away our helmswoman like that. This thing? It's too good to be without any risks, don't you think? What if Vertin doesn't make it back, huh? Who's going to swim us across the sea then? Hmm? It could be risky, but not for Vertin, only for me. Zero multiplied by any number will still be zero. And we have validated that proof. Well, that's not good enough for this pirate. Besides, Vertin doesn't seem like a zero to me. It's okay, Regulus. I think I'll be safe there. But 37, isn't this a sacred test for your people? I've never taken the oath. I'm not one of you. That does not matter, Vertin. But you must know that once we enter the temple, we cannot turn back. The path to the truth is a one-way road. Our last visit was interrupted, remember? You didn't get to ask your question, and I didn't get my answer. And now, I don't need to ask my question anymore. You and your friends were right, Vertin. The discord in the phenomenal world does have an effect on essence and forms. No one can argue against this when facing the emanation. But there's more I'd like to know, and I believe you feel the same. I will tell Six that you're coming with me. I will tell everyone and persuade them, because this is the right thing to do. Go, Timekeeper. While you're out, Lilia and I will ready us for evacuation. We will liaise with the Foundation from here. Thank you both. I'm ready. Before we go, 37, I have a question. Hmm? You just said that Apiron will grant an answer to whoever passes the test. Will it answer my question? If I asked for a way to become immune to the storm?
Damn, you narcissistic, fat-headed, humanocentrist freaks. You are the crazy ones, and, and I, I will prove myself right. Seriously, can someone please bring Matthew back to the rehab center? That mask has made him crazy. Any progress? Not much. We've called all the experts here, but so far it's been a waste of time. Not even a bodily reaction when reciting the text. It doesn't belong to any known language, nor follow any linguistic rules. Many are starting to doubt the accuracy of the incantation. After all, it was copied down by a novice investigator with her arcane skill, not her supervisor. Miss Marcus, can you confirm that the incantation you dictated was correct? I... We also learned that you witnessed a visual recording of Arcana performing her arcane skill, depicted through images recreated by a pure-blooded arcanist. Is that right? Yes, to be precise, I saw it in the memories of Isolde. A former member of Manus Vindicte, using Miss Kakanya's arcane mirror. Can you attest to the accuracy of this memory? I... can't say. Do you deem the reflection of Miss Kakanya's arcane mirror to be accurate, factual, and without misinterpretation? I'm... not sure. Can you confirm that your arcane skill, Read, was performed correctly and provided an unbiased, objective, and flawless interpretation? I... I don't know about that either. But I saw it with my own eyes. I heard the chanting. I don't know what language that was, but that's how I heard it, and I've written it down phonetically. Please calm down. We are only verifying the details. The Foundation has dispatched a special operation squad to you in Vienna. Please make sure the two other Arcanists involved will return to the Foundation with you. I... understood. This? Is this it? An ancient miracle! A circle of salvation! E una seco! A tuna psycho? An inexplicable incantation transcribed by an arcanist based on what she saw in the memory of another arcanist recreated by yet another arcanist. That's as convoluted as a dream within a dream within a dream to think they wanted an objective restoration. I mean, if Gnosis is so reliable and can really cross-check not only once but four times, it should have long replaced science by now. With this level of uncertainty, we might have better luck asking typewriter monkeys to randomly give us the answer to the storm immunity. Adler? Why are you here? I requested his participation on the cryptography team. He is a human, but he excels in the field of cryptography. But... And why can't I be here? Is it because Greta Hoffman's my sister? And this, is this what a respectable and honorable member of the Foundation gave her life to retrieve? Is this the ritual she died for? Oh, right. It wasn't even her who retrieved the ritual. It was a student. 
You are not currently on the official roster. You can leave at any time. Leave? Why should I leave? Ich habe jedes Recht zu wissen, wofür meine Schwester gestorben ist. Nun gut, Leute, an die Arbeit. Lasst uns dieses große Rätsel entschlüsseln und sehen, was es uns bringen wird. Erlösung oder Zerstörung? Return to your stations, please. Let us not dismiss its credibility until we have exhausted every possibility. Also, add Adler Hoffman into the cryptography team roster. Storm Observation and Research Center. Noted. I will make sure Miss Lucy is aware of that. What is the matter? It's a call from the Rehab Center about the previous study on the Manus Mask. Ma'am, I think you should go see this in person. Very good, Matthew. Now tell us, what did you hear? Voices! Those voices! The inaudible murmurs, the frightening whispers, they worm into my ears. I told you before, I wrote about this before, but you dismissed them as manic episodes. <laughs> Did you put on the mask? Yes. How else would I know that I was right? And now I know, and never I ever heard them so clearly, they are screaming inside my head. Their temptations, their promises, I just have to let go of my brain. Can you hear it? The Benevolent Mother is speaking! Now, I can write the ultimate paper! Who is this mother? No! I can't say anymore! They see me! They've come for me! Kill me! Kill me now! Suspend all research on the Madness Mask at once. Its dangers far outweigh the potential benefits. Seal away all equipment and share only a controlled account of the incident with others. We cannot afford to have another researcher try on the mask again. Now, clean this up. Yes, ma'am. Another dead end.
to return to my long-term mission. What is the status of the sampling, Simone? Any updates from the Timekeeper? For the moment, no. The people on the island are still suspicious of the Foundation's motives, so she hasn't had a second chance to collect any samples. But she has called in an hour ago. We were informed that she will return to the cave shortly. She also warned us that the immunity zone on the island appears to be shrinking. The safe zone is not stable. Hmm. Mom, have you noticed something? They are unrelated, Simone. The mask and the incantation are indeed related to Manus Vindicte, but they are unrelated to each other. If the account of the Vienna investigator is correct, one cannot help but question. Why would Arcana not simply give the masks to Isolde and her brother? Investigator Marx's report was highly lacking, making it challenging for us to infer what truly happened. I suppose we can be skeptical that the report is incomplete, but it is all we have for now. She did a good job. I could not have asked for more. We all heard it. An ancient miracle. A circle of salvation. The leader of Manus Vindicte promised a miracle, but the mask is far from it. The mask is a tool of control, 
designed to identify and enslave the believers. Matthew has demonstrated its effects for us. But this ritual is different. Do you mean the ritual is more sophisticated than the mask? Perhaps, but it is not entirely definitive. The investigators in Vienna completed their mission spectacularly, and now Matthew has proven that the mask is useless for our purposes. Its immunity was only a cover for its other functions. And the mask has powerful and irreversible side effects. Even if we find out how it protects the wearer from the storm, we cannot use it on our colleagues. If this incantation is verified to be true, it will be our Promethean fire. This ritual is useless to us. Save yourself, Miss Harbour. We're not getting anywhere with this. What? Explain yourself, Adler. What do you mean the ritual is useless? You barely sat down. My coffee's still hot. I don't need to waste any more time. It's simple logic. The current information is insufficient for cryptographic decryption. We're attempting an exhaustive brute force, comparing every ancient text and record to find the language or corresponding text. It's like looking for a needle in a colossal haystack. Even if we stumble onto a match, none of us can validate such a thing. A breakthrough in this regard is simply not possible. You can't be serious. And what is the basis of your reasoning? Have you figured out the mechanics behind the ritual? I didn't need to understand the intricacies of Arcanum to deduce this. It was simple logic. So you never even tried to understand it. With your supposedly superior human reasoning, you dismissed all of our dedication and hard work just like that. Who the f*** do you think you are?! What? Matthew was right! You arrogant fools, clueless morons! Get out of my face, you humanocentric narcissist! Go to hell! Was this really necessary? I was just sharing my conclusion. Oh, it was the mask. I should have thought of that. He worked in the same lab as Matthew, and he must have been exposed to the mask. But his physical exam seemed fine. Is there an incubation period? Does he seem fine to you now? Huh? No! Williams, put that down. That's the only Conway Automaton 5 left after the storm. Security! Security! We've got a code red!
Sorry. So, what are the implications for the decryption? There were no unintended consequences. We were able to control Williams in time, and the Conway Automaton 5 he destroyed wasn't useful to our work anyway. I am glad you kept the damages to a minimum. Since you are still here, Mr. Ulrich, I take it as a sign that you have more to report? Williams was merely an accident, ma'am, but Adler is a loose cannon on the team. We need to talk about this. With all due respect, I still don't understand why you put him on the team. He may have made his contributions to Laplace, but that was eight years ago. Now he's just an irritating defeatist and a staunch supporter of humanocentrism. He never understood the Arcanum, or tried. He's still stuck in the time before the first storm and refuses to acknowledge that his small, beautiful world is gone. How can someone like that help us? I understand your concern but I have not heard anything about the incapacitation of Adler Hoffman. Incapaci- what? He got a few scratches at most, the guy barely touched him. So he is fine. I am glad we agree. Is there anything else you would like to report? His lack of knowledge on Arcanum is exactly why we need him. His human perspective will offer valuable insights on arcane rituals. The results of this study will not only be used to save Arcanus, but also humans who share the same world with us. We are racing against the clock, mister, and your report on personal disputes and racial conflicts has wasted two minutes and 37 seconds of our time. If he refuses to cooperate, you have every right to remove him from the team. That is your responsibility. Oh. I am relieved that you survived your altercation. What would you like to report? I'm fed up with wasting time, ma'am. The setback with the mask has already driven too many people insane. That's why you should take a look at this. I can logically deduce that our current direction is another dead end. The incantation isn't long enough for cryptographic decryption. We will have to turn to ancient records. Perhaps we'll find something in age-old manuscripts, in tablet inscriptions, or in the memories of powerful arcanists. But even if we find it, we can't validate it because none of us can cast the skill. Low-ranking arcanists can't cast high-ranking skills. 
even if they know the exact pronunciation and meaning of the incantation. Gnosis is beyond reason like that and cannot be debated. It stems from raw intuition rather than logic and intellect, is shaped by personal experience and natural abilities, and cannot be intentionally replicated. And the most determining factor, it relies on the arcanist's purity of blood. The miracle ritual you hold such hopes for belongs to the leader of Manus Vindicte, a pure-blooded arcanist whose power is beyond our imagination. It's like asking a toddler to solve Goldbach's conjecture. It's completely beyond the boundaries of our limits. But you are not an arcanist. Why should you play by their rules? You are right. Arcanists differ due to the purity of blood. Researcher Medicine Pocket has already reported the linear correlation between the bloodline of an arcanist and their abilities, and has drawn a conclusion ten times more extreme. Then you should listen. That's their area of expertise. We know that our cryptographers do not have the power to validate the ritual. And we do not expect you to do that. All I ask of you is to come up with a feasible plan and to do it as a team. Your deduction is logical, but not practical or actionable. So I should return this to you. What? Your logic is impressive, Adler, but do not let it limit your thinking. You spoke of the boundaries of arcane power, but logic has its limits too, no? Knowledge can be obtained through various means, such as intuition, logical reasoning, empirical observations, and teachings from others. Your team is not the only one cracking the ritual through their own means. If you fail, we will turn to the others, and if that approach is wrong, we will try another. If no solution is found before the storm, we will simply wait for the next one. What matters is we keep moving forward, no matter the cost. We must keep to the path, or we will be swept away like dust in the rain. If one team fails, you can still turn to the others. Warum denn? Warum musste es greater sein? What? Forget it. Just a bitter, irrational thought. This marks the end of my efforts. Hopefully, the others will bring you the needed breakthroughs. You've been waiting here for a while. Are you expecting someone? You aren't the type to waste time listening to us whine. So there must be something here worthy of your attention. Is someone close to a breakthrough? Nothing of the sort. I am recharging. We have a public power outlet here. But I am indeed waiting. The doves of the Whitestone House are here. Good. Someone closer to the limit has given us aid.
Be ever so careful, dear. The fiery thirst for knowledge is blazing bright within you. Be careful not to put it out. Once, many fire thieves sat here, sipping coffee, as they tried to decipher the best angle to hold up their reeds to jam the burning wheel of Helios and steal his flame. The gods are selfish. They're stingy with their might. True. I'm sure the early customers of the bakery share the same philosophy. The line must be respected, however hungry the latecomers may be. There are many fire thieves in the field of science, many more than in the bread buyers in the bakery. Take a look at these geeks in uniforms made of aerospace materials. Among them are arcanists in love with science who spend most of their time studying diodes and machines, and humans who are passionate about the future, always finding new inspirations. Elements, lightning, atoms. Perhaps you've forgotten their counterparts in Arcanum, but you must be familiar with them as scientific discoveries. These discoveries are the milestones of progress, sweetheart. The Fire Thieves firmly believe that they would be able to bring about many more technical revolutions. The fourth, the fifth, the 65,535th, not yet, darling. We've only finished the prologue. However, there is a butt waiting down the road. A sudden rain dampened people's enthusiasm for the future. The floppy disks and many clever minds perished in it. Some of the fire thieves grieved the loss. They screamed and swore to retrieve what was lost. What about the rest of them? They return to primitive chaos, like coelacanths crawling back into the ocean after thousands of years of evolution. Once again, they became the protégés of Arcanum. Perhaps they made the right choice by leaving that useless science behind. Who knows? The story of the Fire Thieves has only gone this far, darling. At this point, no one knows what will happen to Prometheus or what's inside Pandora's box.